Hi, welcome back to Genesis Custom Savers. And this one is a little different. As you can tell, it's a uh, custom lightsaber. And the uh, Crystal Focus version 6 is playing Halo music in iSaber. You might be able to see some bar graph illumination to the music. Uh, this is a Halo theme custom saber that a client has uh, commissioned me to build, design and build. And I'm really happy with how it's turned out. So iSaber is loaded with several uh, Halo themed music. You may not have been aware that you can do that with a I do know how to pick them. With a Crystal Focus version 6. It's also got uh, Halo boot sounds and, uh, and a whole lot more stuff so we're going to dive right into it. This video is going to uh, show off the Saber and also serve as the instructions for the new owner. Uh, there's a couple of things because this is a very highly technical Saber that uh, that need to be uh, addressed for warranty purposes. Um, but first, a quick rundown of this saber. Um, it's Crystal Focus version 6 with a lot of custom uh, gadgets and doodads. The powder coating is a trans green. I uh, wanted to go for uh, that, that same look that the 3D artists have achieved with the Master Chief's armor. When you look at it, it's kind of a gloss, but there's a depth to the quality of the green. I wanted to nail that with the saber, of course, the flat black powder coated highlights and some, uh, not polished, but more brushed aluminum like the, uh, the, the Genesis Custom Sabers uh, speaker uh, insert and the, and the buttons. Um, of course, a steel blade retention screw and some black highlights in there as well. Um, so that's the, that's the look of the Sabre. It's a long Sabre, a little bit longer than I normally do, but that was what was requested by the client. Something that looked like something a, a seven-foot Spartan would, would use uh, in answer to a plasma sword. Um, so with this particular one, it's a Custom Sabre Shop parts that have been highly modified. The blade holder is actually quite tight, so I'm going to use this as an example of showing you how to properly operate uh, a tight blade holder on a, with MHS parts. So when you get your blade, sometimes these are inconsistent, you want to put it in. Um, what I always want to do is I want to turn the saber this way because the th parts are threaded. Now these parts are locked so they can't be open. Only the back part of the saber can be open. Um, but with your saber at home, if it's different than this, um, what I always want to do is with my right hand, I want to go over the top away from me. So turn over the top away from me and slide the blade in. And when it's time to slide the blade out, you don't go the opposite way, you go the same way over the top away from you, over the top away from you to pull the blade out. That keeps your threaded parts nice and tight. So to put a blade in, over the top away from me, blade retention screw locks it in, activation button. This is my Shoto font. And of course, uh, Crystal Focus version 6 with the color extender. I can change all the fonts with the rice. Um, that's, uh, that's how that works. The uh, activation button, auxiliary button, the blaster blocks. Hold it down for lockup. And that's how this saber works. It's uh, suitable, sort of suitable for uh, medium dueling. As you'll see, there's some really complicated uh, chassis parts in here, but it's uh, it's definitely solid enough for medium dueling. Uh, very durable when it's put together like this. Um, so I'm going to get into some of the other features, but quickly I'll show you. Uh, well, I'll show you the, the color change. Again, blade goes in. I'm going to change sound fonts. I hold down the auxiliary button until I get into the menu. So I can go through. Again, you've got different Halo themed boot sounds. I'm getting a different blade color now with the different font. That's how that works. Um, I'm going to change fonts once again. Go to the Hoth font. Wake up, Chief. Which is a nice blue. I need you. And what I'm going to show you with this font is, again, over the top away, over to the blade, is uh, there's a crystal chassis in here. This blade, or this retention screw, when I loosen it off, righty tighty, lefty loosey, it's the same thing here. So I want to counterclockwise to release the crystal chassis until, I keep turning until it pops out. So spring loaded crystal chassis, first of its kind that I've built, is an illuminated. Quartz, genuine quartz crystal set to pulse, and uh, and a blue bar graph. As you can see, the bar graph uh, in that that fake uh, circuit board um, animates the circuit board. When you hold the lockdown button, 
few different animations. In most of the fonts, I've got it so you hold down the lockdown button and you get uh, you get the uh, power level meter. Different animation. You see the battery starting to go down. Of course, you can see that the uh, switches are also backlit with the color of the blade pulsing white LED in the quartz crystal. You can also see there's gold accents in the base of the chassis there to kind of mirror the, the gold accents of the visor of the Master Chief um, that are only really visible when the crystal is exposed or in you can slightly see it in, in the, uh, the gap between these armor panels. Um, the gold shows through there as well. So that's how to release the crystal. Uh, when to put the crystal uh, chassis back, it's really quite simple. What I do is because I'm right-handed I switch hands press on the center of this. Now this is, of course, this is a more fragile when it's exposed like this. Um, so a saber is not certifiable for any dueling when the chamber, chamber is exposed. Now to put it back in, I just compress the springs. You can see the bar graph shows through these diffusers. Uh, I'm going to press that until I get it kind of seated in there, wiggle, wiggle a little bit. And here's the trick. This is a little tricky. Um, this screw, what I do is I want to press in a little bit and I want to back it off. So I want to loosen it, so counterclockwise, just a little bit until I feel it click. There, it clicked. Sometimes you have to, might, might have to back it off a full turn to get it to click. When you get it to click, then I can now tighten it, and uh, finger tight, and it's going to hold that panel in there, and it becomes a grip, really solid, no vibration. And again, if I want to release the crystal, I just gently, uh, counterclockwise, turn this until it pops out again. To put it back in, Get it seated, press this way until it clicks, and then, oh, that wasn't a full click, so I'm going to back it off a whole turn. There, I felt it click, and that just means the threads are getting seated, so now it's tightened again. Uh, so that's how the crystal chassis operates. Um, what I am going to point out at this, at this point is these screws which hold the, the chassis rods down, they're going to be thread locked with a little bit of a liquid thread locker uh, before I shift the saber. However, I expect because of the spring, there are bushings in there to keep the vibration down, but because of the chassis being released constantly, down the road, months away, you may need to take a watch screwdriver, and very gently, without scratching the powder coating, you may need to counterclockwise to tighten these rods up a little bit, if they ever become loose. Right now they're not, so again, counterclockwise to, uh, to make sure that they're nice and solid. That might be some maybe monthly or semi-monthly uh, regular maintenance on these sabers, uh, so that's how you would do that. I also want to mention that with this saber, as the client requested, uh, the, the number is 117 as it, uh, as it corresponds to the Master Chief's uh, designation in Halo, has been stamped into this saber by the cover tech. Uh, and the same technique that you'd use to stamp a barrel on a firearm with a registration number or a serial number. Um, so that was kind of a cool feature that the client asked for to go with the saber as well. So now let's get on with the demo of the rest of how the saber operates. I've shown you how, uh, how the blade goes in, how the buttons operate, how the spring-loaded crystal chassis operates, and of course you can see the glow of the, uh, the LEDs through there. Um, this saber is an elite saber, so it does come apart to uh, get access to the SD card. Of course you've got your, your kill key and your 2.1 millimeter recharge port. Wake up, Chief. That boots up the saber. When the kill key is out, and only when the kill key is out, you can unscrew this. If you try to unscrew it, as you can see with the kill key in, you're, you're going to shear off the, the kill key or, or rotate the chassis, which uh, would be bad, potentially could snip wires. Um, the chassis does rotate. You might see there in the video, there's a blue dot and a blue corresponding mark on the threaded area. If you grip the chassis gently, you can turn it a little bit to line those up so that this recharge port lines up with the hole that it's supposed to go in. But that's your chassis. Really, you don't ever need to take off this part of the saber except to get access to the SD card. You would put the kill key in. Now you're safe to access the SD card. I'm trying to find my pencil, which is, of course, the magic implement. You press that against the SD card. It pops out, and you could use your needle nose pliers to gently remove the micro SD card, make whatever changes you need to. However, you may never need to change that unless you need to I want to change some fonts because this saber also has a rice port. So that would connect to the rice cable which is included with the saber and that goes into your uh, your computer 
and you can use the uh, real-time interface whatever the rice stands for and uh, you can make changes on this saber to the color of the blade to the flicker effect all kinds of things so I'm gonna put a link right now right about here and if you click on this link there's another video that shows you how to operate the rice I will stipulate with this LED and this saber it is a tri Cree uh, red green royal blue LED you don't want to exceed and it's it's wired up in this order uh, blue is number one channel number one green is channel number two and red is channel number three so you don't want to exceed 1000 milliamps or one amp in uh, channels number one and two and then the final channel red you don't want to exceed 700 milliamps so when you're playing around with the rice uh, using your getting your custom colors and custom flash on flash on clash just keep that in mind because if you push it too far you could pop one of the dies most likely the red they're a little more sensitive if you push it over 700 milliamps you could pop the red then the saber would have to be shipped back to me and have to be entirely taken apart in order to replace the LED and that would be take quite a lot of time this saber's taken as you can imagine a long time to build so that's how to operate the saber of course when your SD card is back in you pull the kill key and then this uh, second half of the saber just screws back on and uh, you can see it lines up nicely there kill key goes in and that is this halo themed saber uh, thanks for watching and I hope the, the client really enjoys this uh, high-end one-of-a-kind saber